This is Austin. Austin is a relatively new diver, trying his hand at underwater video for the first time. He's doing a pretty good job, too, despite conditions that include less than stellar visibility, depths in excess of 80 feet, and lack of ambient light. As you can see, Austin is able to hold the camera steady while maintaining neutral buoyancy and good horizontal trim. His prior photographic experience has also given him a good sense of composition. What Austin is finding frustrating is the same thing that stymies a lot of new underwater videographers. That is, despite his best efforts, his footage is coming out a flat-looking, monochromatic green. Fortunately, there are solutions to this problem. Many cameras have an underwater setting that automatically compensates for many of the problems we encounter beneath the surface. Unfortunately, the GoPro isn't one of them. One of the best starting points for a GoPro is a snap-on color filter, available from companies like Polar Pro and Backscatter. Under the right conditions, these can make a big difference. And, given a price point of around $30, it's hard to justify not having one, even if it's not the best solution for every situation. The biggest problem with filters is that, although they may produce vastly more pleasing colors, those colors may not be the most natural. In particular, they can make gray rocks and corals appear to be a muddy brown. Another possible solution is to take advantage of the color correction tools built into your video editing software. Although lower-end programs may not offer a lot in this respect, programs such as Adobe Premiere and Apple's Final Cut Pro have some very powerful color grading capabilities, capabilities many video editors aren't even aware of. Let's take a look at how, using the color correction tools in Final Cut Pro, we were able to make Austin's footage vastly more natural looking. The first step is to expand the luma, or contrast. The compression algorithms built into many cameras tends to flatten this, leading to a washed-out appearance. By adjusting the luma, we can give our footage greater depth, restoring some of its natural appearance. Here is an example of what this one single change can make. The next step is to adjust the chroma, or color. Looking at the scope, we can immediately see what the problem is. The greens are completely overwhelming the blues and, as you would expect at this depth, the reds are non-existent. Let's see what happens when we bring at least the greens and blues into better balance with one another. This is better. Okay, it's not the blaze of reds, purples, and oranges we might see on a shallow reef dive, but for this depth, it's a fairly accurate reflection of what we were able to see with our eyes. Let's compare Austin's original shots to some of our color corrected footage. Okay, this is a dramatic improvement. In fact, given conditions, the transformation is nothing short of amazing. One more thing worth mentioning. Some video editing programs have a balance color function. With footage whose color is already well balanced, this may be all you have to do to restore a natural appearance. Unfortunately, with footage such as we are working with here, the balance color function tries to boost reds where none exist. The result is unnatural and, quite frankly, bizarre. Overall, you'll get your most realistic color by white balancing your camera, if possible using color filters for cameras like the GoPro, and if neither of these options are available, or they're just not working to your satisfaction, color correcting in your video editing software. Look in the description for a link to a YouTube video that outlines the techniques we used in Final Cut Pro. And if you aspire to color grade like a true video professional, you should also check out colorgradingcentral.com 
with its vast assortment of color grading tutorials.